Master Chef? Anybody been on Master Chef? You know the ingredients box? Lobster, venison, all these fantastic ingredients. What you do with these ingredients is up to you. You're only limited by your imagination. They're all your tools. You can find all sorts of information just by learning that. You owe it to yourselves to do it. There's loads of material online. People like Irina Shameva, Johnny Campbell does loads of videos. Shane, if he's still here, does loads of webinars. Watch them, learn. It's fun. Um, I've just included this because I'll include this so you can have a, have a look. Um, just some of the some of the operators and the way of moving and navigating from all this. We talked about big data, all this huge amount of information to get down to candidates. And these are the tools that you use to do that. You have to learn. Maybe five years we won't be we won't be doing this stuff. And it would be a shame, I think, because there's something quite beautiful about a nice Belian string, a well-crafted Belian string. Um, shall I do a few? Anybody want to see a few? Anybody got a really good killer Belian string? No? Catherine? Just to give you um, an example, you know, here's some, and I'll, I'll include, I'll tweet this so you can just have a play and, and stuff like that. But um, define. I'm going to. If you're a researcher or you know just interested in, in stuff, how much? time does this save you by just being able to kind of do that, just by knowing the defined colon operator? You know, you're on the phone, I used to be an IT contract recruiter, and used to take requirements from clients in IT, and now, oh yes, it's using Oracle Rack 10G11, I've got absolutely no idea what they're talking about. 11 years in the business. So that way, you can just, there's your, oh yes, it's a special purpose programming language. Next one. This is uh, dead handy for research. The related colon. Anybody know this? You should know it. So, you've got a target company. In this case, Deloitte. I'm pleased with this one, Ralph. And here's all similar companies. FMG, Ernst & Young, McKinsey. This is your target list, maybe. This is where to hunt for. With one operator related. Um, file types. So we can search for file types. This link just here is for you to reference to show you what kind of file types you can search for. <clears throat> it's not just documents and PowerPoints and PDFs, it's other stuff, including code, if you're a technical recruiter. Um, so what am I doing? I'm looking for Excel spreadsheets, and within those spreadsheets, I'm looking for these titles, as in I'm looking for probably names and addresses and phone numbers. this stuff is on the internet. I mean, you can fine-tune it a bit, a bit more based on what you're interested in. There's reams and reams of information on the internet to extract and use, which your competitors don't know how to do. If you learn this stuff, if you use these tools. <coughs> um, we can 
be a bit cheeky. I'll let you play with that one later. Because the purpose of that is to show you to use your brain. How does stuff appear on the internet? How would you find it? Um, in your URL, cv.com. I mean, that's so simple. <coughs> Within the URL, it must contain cv. Doc. Obviously, you probably want to fine tune it a bit more, as in locations and skills and da 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 da. da. But here, cv. Doc. cv. Doc. cv. Doc. Doc. I won't do that one. But Match. Com singles dating site. We can we can X-ray. We can find software engineers. We can we can X-ray YouTube. People have commented on a video. If they've commented on a video, have they a, a knowledge of that subject? Probably. Instead of let's create a YouTube video channel, let's tell them what a wonderful place it is. Blah 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 blah. blah. Actually, let's go and find the people in there who've done stuff. People have subscribed to certain channels within YouTube. Why not? <coughs> um, I'll just give you this last one. This is a technical one, but you know you kind of get the gist of it. So Stack Overflow. Who uses Stack Overflow here to recruit? Is that it? <laughs> the only technical. Okay. But. If you have a 12,000 reputation in Stack Overflow, you are a guru stroke ninja stroke rock star, whatever crappy American term you want to give it. But this is how you find it, just by that. So instead of what other people are doing, which is we've got a job, which is a Oracle developer in Reading, let's go to LinkedIn, let's put in developer or programmer into keywords, let's put in Oracle and let's put Reading 25 mile radius, which is what 95% of recruiters are doing. You don't have to do that and they're all messaging the same candidates with the same jobs, no response. But by learning these things, we can find people who are rated highly by their peers within the industry. So Google and Bing are slightly different. Okay, I'm going to move on to a few tools. Um, and this is, uh, I could have come up with like hundreds, as I'm sure you could as well. But kind of just the ones that I think are interesting at the moment. Um, so Google ignores special characters like the at bit, which is really annoying when trying to find emails. There are ways around that, but it does ignore certain characters. So somebody has come up with um, this one, which includes special characters. And if you are a technical recruiter, you want to look for these things which appear within code, then you can find them. Um, but going back to my point about developing your own things, I looked at that and I thought, it's okay, but it hasn't been really indexed <coughs> that many sites. So I wrote to the guy. And um, sent him another email, how much does it cost to develop it? $2,000. Might do it. Why not develop this stuff yourself or find people that have almost got there and spend a little bit of money and create your own tool? Big data. Brett here from Zpex. Um, Tom's still here. Hey, good move. Big data. Um, I'm interested to hear what you think. Who thinks it's better to know about people personally to recruit them than not? Who thinks it's useful to know that they like pizza and support Man United and have got one child? And who thinks that's more useful? When, when you approach a candidate and you know more information
information as opposed to their links and profiles. Is that more useful to you or not? It is. Because you can have a report and you can have a chat. And you can kind of tailor the job more to that. So this is where all this big data stuff comes from. As in, LinkedIn you know, was the first one, Facebook, Twitter, Stack Overflow, Skype, YouTube, everything. All this information, these aggregator tools like ZPEX and Free Sourcing and, and others, are there to, to filter that information into to one place to help you as a sourcer to talk to the right person about the right job at the right time in the right location. <coughs> So these are the players. Check them out. Um, some of them have free extensions. Have a look. Dice. Uh, used to be called Social CV, being bought by Dice, American Job Board. Um, I'll show you a screenshot of that. Zpex, have a chat to Brett, have a little demo after. And I'll show you a screenshot of that. Some interesting stuff with that. Not just to, just, just to be going out for a curry. Hello, talent bin, swoop. Free sourcing, a bit more technical and UK centric, but looking to expand it. Guild and Remarkable Hire are the ones I recommend you check out right now. There's probably you know, dozens of others. <coughs> so why why bother? You know, why not just use LinkedIn? Because all of my IT candidates are on LinkedIn. Yeah? email address, um, the technical things we've been working on, repositories, as in projects he's done, how he's rated, his personal website, which means that if we go to whois.com we can find his home address and his telephone number at home if we want to, and a lot more information about him. Here's the social CV, stroke dice. Um, it's quite simple, nice simple search. <coughs> put in your skills, put in your location, there's your results. And it's, and it's aggregating, it's bringing in all this data into one place for you. So you can find out more, is this person relevant or not to my job? Not just about do they like pizza and are they married and all this kind of stuff, it's what have they done in these sites? Foursquare, when do people check in? Do they check in at 7 o'clock in the morning to work? Do they have to? But there's no LinkedIn profile, if you notice. So your competitors are all searching LinkedIn for Ruby on Rails, whatever location, and this guy's not even on LinkedIn. So can you do this yourself as a sourcer? Yes, you can. And we should have probably learned that yesterday within the workshop. How do we find people like this on these sites? And now you can do that. Do you always have the time to do it? No, probably not. Not with 10, 15, 20 jobs landing on your desk. So sites like ZPEX and the others will bring this information together for you. And there it is. So ZPEX have now built in an X-ray search. Don't even have to do that. And it'll search all of these sites. Which is dead handy when you haven't got much time or didn't even think of those sites actually quite often. And there's free sourcing, which you know, probably some of you saw the demo earlier. Quite like this bit here, especially only only people with an email address. Quick place to do contract, contract recruitment, and it was all about speed as well as quality. If you hadn't sent a CV within the hour, you forget it. Um, a lot of these tools have phone apps, so delete your LinkedIn app off your phone and use the talent bin one. I would recommend. Can you, can you come up with a mobile app? So, just put them in there, and there's people 
across all social terms. When you come to a conference like this, you know, who am I sitting next to? All the information's there. And stuff like Biz uh, we'll, this, this conference is on Bizabo. You want to sign up? I think it's only me, Oscar. <laughs> there's Bizabo, which is an app for conferences. So you just enter it, and you can see all the attendees of the conferences. You know, why not do that? If you're interested in people who attended certain conferences, why not just download these apps? Um, a couple of other tools to see where people <coughs> hang out. We, you know, we talk about that, sourcing fish where the fish are, where do people hang out? Um, and, and it's true, you know, technical people will hang out <coughs> in Stack Overflow and GitHub, and, and maybe um, design people will hang out on Pinterest, or whatever. Whatever your market is, you need to uh, work out where these people are, and you need to adjust your search accordingly. <coughs> works for Sonos, the music people, and um, they can analyse what sort of person you are by what sort of music you listen to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this is how it looks. <coughs> this is Falcon. So you just literally hover over somebody's name and it shows you everywhere else they are. not just for information, it's, it's like stuff like emails and mobile numbers and, and that's it within the reporting. So you just literally hover your cursor over somebody's name, the email address, and then it'll show you on the right hand side here. So it's quite a nice little little hack if you can think about that. It's reporting is checking where this person is across the internet they have information on that person. So if you take it to the next step further, one plus one equals three, then by loading somebody's email address into Gmail and hovering over it, the portage checks across the internet where they are and it confirms their email address to you. You can upload a file of contacts into a dummy Gmail account and pretend that they're your friends. <coughs> and it will check them all uh, for you. So when you're on LinkedIn, one plus one plus one equals seven now, if you're on LinkedIn and you want to check people's email addresses and you load your Gmail contacts file into LinkedIn, LinkedIn thinks you know those people, and LinkedIn will cross-reference all those people against the LinkedIn database and confirm their email address to you. <laughs> I'll tell you after. I'll show you after. Um, so I know what you're thinking. I don't want to use that really reported in Gmail. I use Outlook, so it will be coming to Outlook, I hear. Um, but Outlook version was recommended, certainly within my group, Contact Monkey. Extraction tool. So we search, you know, we've talked about this already, you know, how do you, once we've searched, how do we extract that information? And I think it was just uh, Ralph talking about all this data, but what do we do with it? And that's a really key point. Once we've got this data, what do we do with it? You know, how do we, how do we use that data? And you can do searches every time and forget the data, or you can actually do some stuff with the data. So the old agency I worked in, when I got into this kind of stuff, was I thought, well, every time we search, we're just searching, trying to fill a job, and then firefighting the day after, again. So why don't every time we search, we download the CVs that we find and drop them into our database of contractors, and try and get a majority shareholder of the IT contractors in the UK? That's exactly what we did, by, just, by extracting 
So, um, Shay was talking about Outwit earlier. We did a demo of it. Um, Outwit Hub is free, I think. Outwit Docs, maybe, I don't know. Uh, Broadlook Contact Capture is free. You point your contact capture at a website, whether that be LinkedIn profiles or something else, you press Control C and it extracts all the information. Diver and Profiler. I've got a copy if anyone wants to have a play. Maybe if I've got time, maybe I'll show you. Uh, eGrabber, you've got some interesting stuff. There's rumours about the ultimate email tool on eGrabber, as in it confirms email address. We shall see. Down them all is a Firefox extension. Just right click, and you just download all the information that you're seeing on the web page. Free. Scrape is another one. Extract email address is another one. Email extractor using auto page. What does that mean? Well, I'll show you. I'll just show you that one. So let's just do. You know, so we're talking about Bullhorn Reach earlier. <coughs> as a website where recruiters go. So to find a person within Bullhorn, which just have to do forward slash user. So say I'm looking for email addresses. <coughs> just write anything I like. email addresses. If I in include an extension called AutoPager, which I haven't got in here because I just knackered my laptop up. But if I did, when you get to the bottom here, it carries on going. It just makes it one great big long page. You just literally keep your finger on the button and it just scrolls it like that. So once I've got all that information, there's any R2R people in here, you can thank me after. So if we take all that information there, and then we go to an email <coughs> extractor, like that. Wait a second there. So we just paste all the all the stuff we've copied in there, all the rubbish. Hit. Can you see that all right? bolting tools onto each other. Any questions? Auto pager. It's a Chrome extension. There's um, fastest Chrome does the same thing and I don't know what it is in Firefox but there will be something within uh, Firefox as well. Right, where do we get to? These are the extraction tools, and this is what some of them look like. Contact capture, so you just put it all nicely, you can export it nicely. Down them all, that's what it looks like. You can do images, you can do documents, you can do just profiles. And um, that's just to show you the, uh, the email extractor. Um, email verifiers. So, I think the best one is the one I just said, which is created by a lady called Arena Shimeva, who runs the Blaine Strings Group. It's probably one of the best. Zoom Info is quite clever because it asks you to share your contacts and then you can see other people's contacts. But of course, you just join Zoom Info and remove all your contacts. Um, that's a good email tester. Email tester, okay. Who is? somebody's got a blog or they're a web developer and they've got their own website, you put that URL of that website into who is and it will tell you their name, where they are, telephone number, phone address, inside leg measurement. <coughs> um, I have to include
presentation will open. I have to include graph search. Um, if you haven't got graph search, just change your language settings to English US and you've got it straight away. By the way, I think it's quite slow rolling out. It's amazing what you can find. As, as one of the ladies earlier was talking about part time workers in Huddersfield, you know, fill your boots in graph search. I'm not saying contact people in Facebook, but I am saying as a research tool, it's fantastic. It's a place, it's the biggest database there is, 500 million people, why not use it? Um, so you can kind of, you know, find me somebody who works at Oracle, you liked SQL Server, and then you've got these other things down here. You know, there's been a lot of talk about um, European recruitment, let's find people who would work in this country. Well, if somebody's hometown is Istanbul and they're living in London, that's going to be much stronger than trying to find somebody who lives in London to get to Istanbul. And this is how research works. Don't be scared of the fact that these tools are, oh, it's Facebook. Yeah, there's 500 million people with information about themselves. Which, as long as we're professionals, we can extract that information and present our opportunity in a professional way. But it, these are tools to find out information. How am I doing for time? Five minutes. Okay. Um, Google custom search engine. So to Google, we're limited to 32 words as a, as a, as a Boolean string. Google custom search engines we're not. Another thing you can do as well, if you're in a specific market sector, say you're interested in, I don't know, retail or finance, whatever, you can direct Google custom search engines at specific sites. So here's my list of 30 sites that I'm interested in. And you just create a search string, which you can sit on your desktop and anyone in your company. That's what I'm looking for. And it'll just sit there. And it'll just search all of those 30 sites. Free. Fantastic tool. Uh, Yahoo Pipes. Moving on. It's, uh, it's an interesting one. It kind of bolts things together. Um, can't probably do an hour session on that, but have a look at it. Uh, if this, then that. I think it's a great idea. If something happens on Twitter that does that, then do that. Or do that, or do that. It's kind of how you build your own things. More of a social media tool, but check it out. It's limited at the moment, but I, lo I love the idea. Who works at another Chrome extension? So you're on a website, and you have um, who works at sitting as an icon. You just click it, and it shows you your LinkedIn connections who work at that company. So you can see whether it's for business development or whether that's for finding candidates. It's a warmer intro than, than not knowing. Um, one tab for the sources. That, um, I know I've had a good day. I've got two screens at home and a projector <laughs> and a big TV. And I've got two screens. If those both screens are full of tabs, I know I've had a good day. But one tab just minimizes all into one tab for you. AGB people. Have a look at that. Put your own name in it and see what information there is about you on the internet. Nerdy data, which searches source code. It's not relevant to the sources, because obviously they're broad groupers. And um, search iminfo.com searches instant messaging sites like Skype. You know, how many people are on Skype? Name, address, job title. Um, Catherine mentioned this earlier, I think Patrick said it's <coughs> Great one, but I'm not, you know, people's bios on Twitter always say coffee drinking ninja mother, you know, it never says their job title, does it? Which is what we want to know. And even if it does have their job title, then it doesn't give us enough information. But by looking at the content within Twitter, you know, who's attended this conference on this hashtag, or who talked about this or that, that's pretty handy for us. 
how to start, what to do to our chain. A little intro to that. Email formats, working out email formats for companies. Or you could use speech marks, attributes, company name, dot com. Uh, resume Grabber is now free. It's an eGrabber product. You have to write these down or click it. Uh, Bulbul Reach, you know about that one, posting ads for free. Great way to recruit recruiters. Site bulbulreach.com forward slash user. Put your location in for the um, market sector you're interested in. You can see how many requirements these recruiters have got, how many jobs they're working. Recruiting bar, if you're interested in this, pre constructed Boolean string, sits on your desktop. Um, and thousands of Chrome and Firefox extensions. Um, for free, they're all free. Anyone got any other tools? Why is it supplied? <laughs> is that useful? Contact capture for last. Um, I've just got this last night. I said I'm going to speak at this conference. I'm going to have a free one. So if you want to get this stuff for free, just contact the vendors and say you're going to speak. No, not really. Um, so, So you've got Broadlook Profiler and Broadlook Diver. Um, let me just show you this. I'm not saying it's the best, I'm just saying it's quite interesting at the moment. I just thought I'd show it to you. So this is like one of the extraction tools. So if we come up with a, a string, just a simple one like that maybe. Looks like it's not doing anything, but it is. Yeah, six percent, seven percent. You see that? Not quite. So there, it comes with that. And you dive into the results. There you go. It's just populating it and export. Where do you want to export it to? It's quite, it's quite nice. more to it than that, but and there's videos online, this is quite interesting for research I think, um, so new search, you just put the company name in, so I'll put mine in, so So it's just interrogating the website and extracting information which, which we can tell it to extract, whether that be name, surname, phone number, address, email address, etc, etc. So here it's doing its thing. Um, I guess you may just kind of run this, and here we go. So it's looking for job titles, it's looking for email addresses, it just picks them up. export it. And you get the options of where to export it to. So I mean Excel is pretty nice for most CRMs and stuff like that, but you have to look at these other options here. You can choose what you want to export. That's it. I just want to show you a few tools that are good at the moment. Um, talk to the vendors though and you know, create your own and investigate. There's loads of them out there and a lot of them are for free. So, um, but 
ਵਿੱਚੋਂ ਲੈ ਲਈ